Welcome everybody, welcome to Claydesk. My name is Syed and today we are going to be interviewing a candidate for an entry-level DevOps position. How exciting is that? So check it out, the top four DevOps questions that are typically asked in any interview. Can you also explain what happens uh, when something goes wrong in the production environment? What do you do and how do you get notified? Sure. So my go-to application for monitoring and alerting is New Relic and PagerDuty. And New Relic is great because it has several level, you know, agents and it also has uh, a monitor. So tying infrastructure monitoring together with API monitoring, um, debugging problems, and all kinds of applications. And PagerDuty um, also has lots of functionality, right? So notifying with email, mobile apps, and Slack. So when I'm on call, for example, I found this to be very, very convenient because I get pagers you know, all the time. So that's really what I've done when something goes wrong in production. I get to, uh, yeah, just check my pager and I get an email or I get a notification. And uh, that's the way I sort of know exactly what goes wrong within the production environment. And of course, you know, I fix it otherwise. All right, great. So yeah, it was, it was perfectly all right because that's exactly how, um, you know, what you do and how it goes, you know, whatever goes wrong in the production environment. So yeah, pager duty and relic is, is uh, fairly common. So uh, I'm glad you have that experience and, and you've been working with these tools. So yeah, definitely, that helps. All right, great. So I'm gonna ask a couple of questions here. You can answer them. First, tell me about your experience with Windows and uh, working within the Linux environment, right? And then secondly, what's your experience with a scripting language or have you worked with Python, Java or Shell Bash? So just let me know what you've done as far as uh, scripting language is concerned and also of course your experience with uh, Windows or Linux machines. Sure, so I've been using Mac and OS for many years and I've used Mac OS as a desktop operating system mainly because the tools I need for scripting and connecting to remote systems are really, you know, they're available. On the server side, you know, I've worked with Red Hat, CentOS, and Ubuntu. And those servers I've installed and maintained, like web servers, I've also installed, you know, database servers and DNS servers and other applications. I really, really enjoy using Ubuntu Linux because, all, you know, it, with all these packages, it's an enjoyable process. Compared to Red Hat and CentOS, I've had a much easier time getting applications to run on Ubuntu, right out of the box. And that's really, what I enjoy about Linux. It's really a simple, robust, and a powerful system. Yes, I've been using Python for almost about four or five years, and I use it for automating deployment jobs and API interactions with AWS and, of course, GCP. What I really like about Python that it's you know easy to read syntax. I also like you know to work with data in JSON format, and also I like how Python implements virtual environments for working environments. And that's really my experience working with, you know, Python and scripting in Python. And uh, moreover, I've, I've really worked with AWS more as compared to GCP. So the complicated script I've written is the chat application. That was one of my examples. And I'm very familiar with web development and I learned a lot about using Django as a backend for a web application. So I actually learned, you know, enough to write a lesson, right, in exactly how, you know, that chat application kind of worked because from the user perspective and from the back end as well. So, yeah, uh, definitely I'm pretty good at scripting and I've written many, many scripts. And I'd be happy to even give you a, a demo, right? Um, yeah, so not a problem at all. All right, great. So, yeah, um, thank you so much for your time. Um, I appreciate your time. Uh, to come online and just give us the interview. So yeah, we're gonna you know discuss and of course get back to you on um, whether we, we whatever we decide. So you'll probably get an email from from HR. So yeah, uh, thanks so much. Uh, really appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right, welcome back. So we took a look at the top three questions, right? So I'm gonna give you the the, the fourth question right here because that's probably the most common question that you'll get, and that's really the basic question like what is DevOps and what do you know about DevOps, right? So how do you define DevOps and what does DevOps mean to you? Now this may be one of the earlier questions you get in the interview because it sets the tone for the rest of the discussion. 
Now, your understanding of DevOps and its core ties into the parts that make up DevOps as a whole. So the best approach to answering this question is to use the definition method, right? Fortunately, the forefathers of DevOps, you know, gave us a great acronym and you got to remember it. It's called CAMS or CAMS model, right? Culture, automation, measurement, and then sharing. So try to remember this acronym and, and use the parts that make it up to round out your answer. So culture is a result of the way that how teams interact, right? In DevOps culture, the aim is to have development and operations team interact in a way that breaks down barriers between the two. So with a clear focus on the roles and responsibilities of each. Now with both teams working towards a common goal, everyone wins. Automation is second, right? It used to speed up the feedback between these two teams by using tools that enable collaboration and repeatable processes, interactions, and development and operations team can be easily facilitated. Now, this builds confidence in both teams' ability to successfully deliver a product or solution to the customer. So some key points to automation include revision control, pull requests, continuous integration, and configuration management. Measure is the third acronym, right? By measuring aspects of development and operations, teams can start to see where the bottlenecks are and then take actions accordingly. Measuring performance of the production system is also key. Now this helps teams to know that deployments have not degraded you know, at all, like response time, for example. And last up is sharing. Now sharing allows for cross foundation of ideas, problems, and solutions between various teams. And not just the development and operations, but throughout the entire organization. By transferring knowledge, collective intelligence increases, right, and benefits everyone. Also contributes to the diversity of, you know, all kinds of transparency and people that makes teams that are more effective. So when you're actually defining DevOps, it's important to not focus on in any one particular tool or technology. So don't go out on a tangent. Instead, focus on how DevOps is a way of thinking, how it can be applied to different types of organizations and tools. However, the ideas behind culture, automation, measurement, and sharing, CAMS, remains the same. So this is really how you would end up approaching this particular question. So, and that's really the key when we talk about the DevOps and how well you are prepared and how much do you know about DevOps. Because the first question that you answer really determines where it's going. And I'm going to give you a pro tip here, all right? Last but not least, this is a pro tip for you. Whenever you answer a typical question, now there are a couple of types of interviews. First, there are those candidate interviews, for example, where they have 10 or 13 questions listed so the either the recruiter or the the you know drug tire or the company itself would just go through those 13 questions right and they are not going to ask you anything else but those questions on the list so that's the first approach and th this is pretty okay the second type of interview is a discussion based interview and i'm going to get that into maybe a, a, a different you know le a lecture or a different video but the the discussion type in interview is really really cool because that is more advantageous to you as the interviewee now how come well the, here's the pro tip whenever you answer a question in a discussion type setting always remember the answer that you give will determine the next question right so if your strength is python right or if your strength is automation then make sure you, whatever question you answer, you integrate the next element. In other words, if I'm answering all about DevOps, I'm gonna say at the end, something like, oh yeah, I mean, automation is key. Well, guess what? The next question is gonna be on that automation, right? So here's the pro tip. I hope you guys like the top four DevOps questions and of course, the answers. Practice with it. Let me know in comments and of course, make sure you subscribe to our Cladis e-learning. We have full courses here, right here, free for you. Or if you want to take, uh, you know, go to cladis.com and enroll in all of the courses for a small fee. So that's up to you. Either you, you can learn free or you can learn um, otherwise and you have access to hundreds and hundreds of courses on cladis.com. So like, comment, and subscribe, of course. Let me know, post your questions 
or comment down below if you have any questions that you have, I'll be happy to answer. My name is Syed and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.